Hey weirdlings, how's it going? My name is Danielle Davarona and I'm new to the show. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. My name is Danielle and I'm normal. I'm not sure what you're into, but I know what gets me jazzed about art and that's anime, all things anime. One of my favorite all-time directors, producers, creators of all time is Hayao Miyazaki. He's most well known for films like Spirited Away, uh, Princess Mononoke, and Totoro. Hopefully you guys are gonna learn a couple of tips and tricks from me about watercolor and some different facts about the movies that maybe you didn't know before. For this watercolor painting, you're gonna need several materials. First and foremost, a watercolor brush. The difference between a watercolor brush and a regular brush is the reservoir. This is the area that holds water in your brush. If you use an acrylic brush, it's gonna be more flat no matter how big it is, and the reservoir it has is really small. Have at least three things of water. They need to all be clean, unlike these ones over here. The next thing that you have is alcohol. This is isopropyl rubbing alcohol. You can use nail polish remover, you might even be able to get away with some Bacardi 151. The next thing is salt. This can be any kind of salt. I have table salt, but the bigger the granule, the bigger the star shapes. So you wanna use things like margarita, Epsom, or sea salt to give you some really cool effects. The last thing that you're gonna need is watercolor. Big surprise, I have Van Gogh watercolors in a variety of different colors. You can use any types of watercolors except for the really cheapy Crayola ones. You can pick up a 12 or 24 pack of the cheapest stuff at Hobby Lobby for about $13 and they have a weekly coupon. You're also gonna need some permanent markers. I have black that I used in my painting. You can use dark purple or blue, whatever color you like. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is measure out a border around the paper. Very, very lightly, you're gonna go around the perimeter of the paper. My hands are really shaky. Gonna line it up with the corner of the paper. Gonna line it up with the corner of the paper. First thing I'm gonna do after we get done with that is measure where the middle of the inside of this picture is. The next thing I'm gonna do is measure approximately, or exactly, because it's a ruler. That's how you use rulers, exactly. Uh, five inches from the middle of the paper so that we can have consistency where the eyes are. Because we're gonna make more than one of these types of pictures, just different characters. And we want them to be able to have some kind of uniformity. And the way that we're gonna achieve that is through the level of the eyes. That way they all have a plane that matches. This is where we're working for no faces, no face. What I'm gonna do right now is just map out his oval shape. Just make sure you draw really, really light. It doesn't have to be exact at all. You just wanna get a good feel for where things are. Feel free to grab a picture of no face from the internet and print it out. Professionally, you can change something 20% and it qualifies as not cheating. So, alrighty friends, what I like to do is just approximate where the tips of his little adjuster eyes start. They're gonna be little triangle friends. Everything is a friend in my world. Circle of friends, all weird links, yeah. Send that to your mom for Christmas. So these are the eye triangles that kind of sit on top of No Face's eyeballs. Do you guys know that Yubaba, the owner of the bathhouse's name, actually means hot water lady? Now we're gonna do the eye shapes of No Face's eyes. These look kind of like jelly beans to me. And you wanna make them um, have a curve that looks kind of like this underneath right here. That way he looks like he's uh, smiling or glinting. I don't know, I can't do it very well. There you go. I mean, the little bean shapes. I make all kinds of weird derpy faces whenever I paint, so just feel free to derp with me, guys. He's got these little, like, war paint thingies that kind of go underneath his eye beans right there. And then he's got longer ones that kind of come down underneath those little lines that hit about where his mouth will be. And you want these top parts of the triangle to, to mimic the shape that you've made in your jelly bean eyeball too. So we're gonna fish out these face triangles. The last two things that we have to do are his bean-shaped mouth and a little chin indicator on the bottom. Who's got a smiley face? No face does. Just ignore me, because I'm five. This area is white. 
So you wanna make sure that you get as much of the pencil mark out of that as possible. Now that we have No Face's face drawn out, it's time to get to the fun part, the actual watercolor. And that's a fun fact. This movie is actually an allusion to the sex slave industry in Japan that started in the late 90s and early 2000s. Jahiro is a child and in this movie she's forced to change her name much like children's sex slaves are forced to change their names in Japan. She is followed by No Face who offers her money in exchange for love, companionship, or acceptance. Sinister stuff. Right now what I'm doing is grabbing some markers. Just Sharpies will do. Now I have to sing, it's Christmas music time. Oh my goodness, how on earth am I still trying to rhyme? It's not fair, this is dumb, why is it in my brain? This is gonna make me and Mark go insane. Weird girls are so cool, yeah we're dumb and fun. Animes and comic books, fun for everyone. I had way too much coffee today. Spirited Away was the first anime to win an Academy Award in 2002. The reason that we're doing this before any of the watercolor painting is because if you accidentally splash water on this, it's not gonna run. If we did it with watercolor, we would have to wait for it to dry completely for it to saturate this much. Okay. Okay, the first step in actually getting to paint your painting is gonna be to wet down the entire canvas except for this white part here or the border. Avoid this like the plague. Once you start this, you really kind of have to just go. I kind of like it when the paper warps itself and pools and does its own thing. I think it's really interesting the way that watercolor kind of has a mind of its own and you get to watch it unfold before you. This is called wet on wet painting. Wet on dry would be wet watercolor on dry paper. You can have varying degrees of wetness. Moistness. Moist. So yucky. No face is a ball of blackness. But what's really fun about watercolor is that you get to create and interpret your character however you want to. And what's really fun is that the undulations that these colors make together, they're gonna blend and crisscross and hold hands in all kinds of weird, crazy, fun ways. You don't wanna hurt that. You want them to love each other. So we're gonna take some blue. I like a royal, weird, kinda fun, quirky blue. And you're gonna load your brush up a ton. And then just take it and squeeze it wherever. It can be nice and spontaneous. You can vary the height, that way you have bigger drops or littler drops. Sound effects are a must. Meow, 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 meow. If you feel like your blues and your pinks are looking more like pastels, you wanna punch up that color so that it shows up underneath that black that we're gonna put down here in a little bit. Ooh! Purple! What the watercolor is doing right now is making these weird, crazy, like, <laughs> shapes. They're called blooms, and it's literally because it kind of looks like a flower blooming as it crawls out from its space. We have plenty of color in here now, so I'm gonna get to the black so that we can get to the really fun stuff. Feel free to make it as dark or light and random as possible. You want it to be organic. That's what makes it special. I think that I sound like your mom. You wanna to try to get a lot of dark values close to No Face's face. That way there's real definition in where you've stopped painting and where his face starts. I think a little bit more red might work and then we'll be good to go. Oh my God. We're gonna get to the fun part right now. Oh my gosh. Ah, it's so cool. It's our secret compartment. So in the secret compartment, salt. Toothbrush is for splatter painting. This is one of the best tools to use for splatter painting because it gets it everywhere. Alcohol has to be one of the most fun things to add to watercolors I've ever experienced. It makes these crazy nebulous shapes. One thing that you need to keep in mind for these special ingredients is that the areas that have dark spots are the ones to avoid. Put it in the lighter spots that have a lot more action going on so that you can really see your work. I'm gonna put the alcohol straight into my hand and just kind of bloop it randomly. I like using my fingers and just splashing it around. It helps to spread it and it makes really neat shapes. <laughs> Next, we'll use our salt. The way that you can tell that your paper is ready for salt is if it has this weird, like, barely gloss on the top of it. The black holes, 
you want to stay out of because they're really bad. And they suck up your salt and they eat it and they get fat and they have thyroid issues and you get upset with them. You can't see what it's doing right now, but as the watercolor dries, it's gonna have these neato star shapes that appear. If you think that you need to lift some areas out to make some more interesting things happen, then feel free to just stick your paper towel in your watercolor. This piece isn't as dark as I want it to be. Sometimes it really does take more than one layer to get the desired effect that you want. Now it's time for some toothbrush action. Dip it in the water and find a paint color that we like a lot. I'm gonna pick my red, I think it's sassy. Be forewarned that you could ruin the clothes that you're wearing. You're gonna take your thumb and rake it across your toothbrush like so, and make all kinds of little splatters wherever your heart desires. You can already see some of the star shapes that are happening because of your salt. If you've used bigger salt pieces, like Epsom salt or sea salt, you're gonna see bigger star shapes. I recommend getting some margarita salt and having a sip yourself. Apply the alcohol like you have no sense of self and nobody is watching you outside of your apartment. Jam into a song that no one else can hear. For these triangle shapes, we're gonna do similar stuff. You just wanna mix together a light purple. You wanna use clean water for this. Woo! Boop it into your triangle. This type of painting is very different from what I usually do. Most of my stuff is extremely detail-oriented, down to every last mark and hair and nook and cranny. And I feel like this is a really fun way to let loose and just explore your medium and just kind of let the watercolor take you on its journey and tell you what to do. If you don't usually work this way and it drives you crazy, I promise I've been there. But once you let go and be free, it's fun. The scene with the river spirit where Jahiro pulls a bike out of its side is actually inspired by a real river cleanup that Hayao Miyazaki was a part of when he was a kid. It was something that stuck with him forever and he really wanted to include an underlying environmental message in this film as well. Little flicks will do. The last and only other technique that I can recommend right now that I haven't actually tried on this piece yet is to take a plastic bag and put it in your dark spots if you wanna break them up a little bit. The way that you bunch up the plastic bag, it'll dry that way underneath and it's really crazy some of the shapes that you get. Take your plastic bag, you can rip it apart and just leave little pieces in uh, different areas that you want to have some interesting crazy shapes. And what I like to do is just bunch it up and just stick it. You can put things on it to hold it down. To speed up drying time, you can use a hair dryer. You want to avoid Blow drying your pools, you're gonna let those sit overnight. You just wanna get everything else dry. So this is your painting. It's a little bit covered with gook and muck, but once this is all dry, you can lift it up, it'll come off no problem, and you'll have all these different pools, your crazy plastic shapes, your star shapes from your salt, and your alcohol nebulas. Can you tell I'm excited? Okay, weirdlings, a little movie magic for you. I actually have a painting that's already finished to show you. That way you can see what it looks like when it's dry. The only thing that I did differently in this painting is I didn't use as much blue and purple. That's why I like this one better. This is the finished product. Got your no face. I have it framed already. This is super duper cheap frame. Hopefully you enjoy yours just as much as I did mine. Outro, how do I do an outro? That's our finished no face painting for you. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself because I had a ton of fun. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And check out the other girls at weird-girls.com. <laughs> Till next time. See you next time. See you next time. I don't know. I don't know how to end the video. Awesome.